95.7 The Game. Breaking news. <laughs> All right, this courtesy of Giants insider Alex Pavlovich. The Giants have been informed that they are out of the bidding for pitcher Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Per source familiar with the discussions, they pushed very hard, says Alex, but the expectation is that he is going to end up in L.A. or New York. That sucks. It really does. And and I've heard, I heard just this week that they were pushing really hard for him. Um... I think that the the word inside the building has been for a while they will not be outbid, and I'm sure that they weren't. Um, but it's also going to just it's going to go down as another brick on the wall. Even though um, you know you go situation by situation, and I think you can explain these away, but people will take them as excuses. Um, what we've heard, if you're following the Yamamoto thing, is that he 1,000 percent wants to be on the biggest stage possible that's what matters to him and so that's why he's looking at Yankees and Dodgers Um, but that is not going to comfort Giants fans right now Um, and from what my understanding is of every free agent pursuit that Farhan Zaidi has had in his time here this is the one he was most invested in most excited about most all chips into the middle table on and um, and they've lost out again. They've lost out again. And so there might be reasons for each individual one. But um, yeah, that's how I think that's how it's going to resonate for Giants fans. This is another brick on the wall. There are a lot of ways to still save this. You got to go address the starting rotation, and I'm confident they will. But this dude's going to be a star. He's going to be a star. And if he ends up teammates with Otani, I mean, it's 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 a kick in the you know. I think you got to start kidnapping him. On, on their visits. <laughs> Just like kidnapping them, put them in the Threat, bunker. Threaten them. Put them in the bunker, kidnapping them, you, and, and then hold them for you, ransom. Because that's the only way you're going to get them now. They kind of do that in football. Like yeah. football free agency is like, don't let him out of the building. Like make him sign the contract. The Giants are holding Yamamoto hostage. <laughs> breaking news on CNN. Yeah. But uh, the, 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 all joking aside, like it's not even who anymore. It's just another one that that doesn't want to be here. And that's the way Giants fans are seeing it. Yeah. The ones I talk to, I grew up here. I grew up a Giants fan. My friends, my family. It's not the name or Carlos Correa or Aaron Judge or Bryce Harper. If you want to go down the, the big long list, it's just like it, it's starting to become a complex with us. Like why? And then you read the comments. No one wants to live in San Francisco. Yep. Is it that? Is it that? Or do you for, just have for, a better chance to win with the Dodgers yeah, now because for, Shohei's there? For Yoshi Yamamoto, I don't think Yoshi Yamamoto's like, I've been, you know, watching Fox News and uh, I'm a big Ron DeSantis guy. Like, I no, I do not think that that's what's going on with Yoshi Nobu Yamamoto. Um, I think that he wants to be on the biggest stage and that's not here. And quite frankly, it's never been here. If that's the way you view America through the lens from where he played, then sure, L.A. will always be L.A. and New York will always be New York and it's brands and it's branding and, and yeah, it's it's all of that. Or maybe it's just Otani is my teammate. Like, I, all of that stuff. But none of it matters right now. You're right. It's a complete complex. You'd almost rather be the team that, that, uh, that doesn't even make an offer because then you can just be like, yeah, that's... That's like out of our zone. The Giants have walked around. When you now add this up, this is fun exercise. The Giants have now, in the last three or four years, have offered over $2 billion that people won't take. The one thing I would say, this is a do league, not a try league. You you know what I mean? Yep. It's for players, for everyone. It's a do league. And... You know, last year they offered seven hundred million dollars to two players. They both said no. Well, I think the Giants said no to the second one. Well, true. That's true. One of them said yes. And Dibs always gets mad at me when I do that. Really? Well, <laughs> scoreboard. They don't have him. Did he play for the Giants last year? I don't know. That I, I was not excited about Carlos Correa. I'm sorry. Like his, he 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 has more talent on his pinky finger than I ever had. Yep. But I just was not excited about that. Well, it's probably a bad deal. I would have liked to him for him to be on the Giants. Uh, signing him for $350 million to his 39th birthday, I would freely admit at that time I was excited about it because of the situation we were in. It's probably a bad deal. You just need to sign one, dude. 
The Nats signed Jason Worth, and the Nats sucked for years. Mm -hmm. And once they signed him, people wanted to come. Like, Otani... Otani had far-reaching implications yep. on a great, yep, and a, and a variety of reasons besides just baseball. Dude, if they get them both, yeah. Oh my god! But they don't. The, the, so here's what you got to do: you got to draft and develop. I mean, and and I and I had Brian Sabian. I've talked to him about it. And you draft and develop, and you sign a guy here, sign a guy there. You're gonna draft your hitter. You're gonna develop your hitters. Because it's not, even with the archways closed and the fence moved in, it's still not the most wonderful place to hit. It's not mm -hmm. an awful place to hit like people make it out to be, but it's not Cincinnati in no, July it, when it's 90 yeah. degrees. It'll never be that. It's not Atlanta where guys are just popping them out left no, and right. I don't think we want it to be that. No. I don't want it to be that. No, well, we've won with pitching and defense. Right, right. I want the pitchers to be able to pitch. And I firm, like, whether it's Blake Snell or Corbin Burns or what, like, they'll get... They're 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 going to address the rotation. I think there's at least one, probably two, sort of we can feel it type trades that are coming, and trades are probably the way that the Giants are going to have to do this. Yeah, but let's go though, right? Yeah, let's go. I can hear Giants fans screaming at their radio in their car right now. Let's go, Uncle. Let's go. Yeah, I, I, let's sign somebody. Stop telling me you're going to let's do it. Let's go. Yep. And I'm sure that pressure is being felt on the corner of third and king, too. But then you have to be careful not to make moves just to make moves. That's to true, too. If you ever start trying to appease a fan base, and that's your your impetus for making decisions as an organization, you're going to fish in last place every year, and you're not going to spend your money wisely. This is my concern about Farhan Zaidi now, actually, because I have been very, very stubborn to leave his corner. Um, things are definitely not as good as they were three years ago when they were winning 107 games. Um, but my concern with Farhan now is you're going into a big offseason, so you can't change your GM, so they don't change their GM. And now they keep Farhan, but they give him a different directive. And so now what we've been watching is Farhan in his comfort zone, and it worked one year and it didn't work two years. Now Farhan operates out of his comfort zone. That's my concern. I don't know that it's a worthwhile concern. Maybe it'll be fine. But asking Farhan Zaidi, who is, like you suggested, someone heavy into analytics and by the book and knows how to find people, um, you know, hiding behind closed doors, that's all great. But, but, but now the directive is, no, go, go get everyday players, open checkbook, and uh, and land them, inspire them to come to San Francisco with these surroundings, whether it be the city or the lineup. I don't think that's his normal way. Agreed. Would a different president of baseball operations in your mind make a difference? Not not right away. No, no. I mean, that's, that's a why, question I think you have to ask yourself if you're a fan. If 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 we had somebody else in here. Would we be signing these guys? No, because people don't come for the president of baseball operations. That's that, that like this is one thing I would love everybody to know. We oh Farhan can't close. Farhan doesn't close. Farhan's in the meeting. The presentation is made, but you don't make three hundred million dollar decisions because you like the video that someone put together. You make it for all of the other reasons. Yeah, but the Kobe Bryant one. Oh, that probably was good. I but, would sign. Right? But he, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that one's different. But you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Nobody ever is going to be like, I went to the Giants because I liked the president of baseball operations. It's on Farhan's lap because what is here to pitch to a free agent is not good enough. It's not a good enough lineup. There are questions about, as you just detailed, Am I going to get to play every day? Am I going to get to do what I'm told I'm going That's to do? That's changing. Right. That's changing. Do they, do people believe it yet, though, or do they want to see it first? Well, Gabe's not here. Yep. But was that all Gabe? I think it was a team effort. Okay. The, the one thing I will say is that, it, it, hey, I think Farhan's wonderful. I've had some engaging conversations with him, and he does have a dynamic personality. But I don't know if the game has changed so much that the old school approach doesn't work anymore. But I know when Brian Sabian asked me to be a giant, it wasn't like asked me to be a giant. It was like, and, and who am I? I'm the 26th guy, 25th guy in the roster. I'm nobody. But like, it was more like, it's a, it's a privilege to play for this team. And I don't make mistakes. And if we're coming after you, you're going to fit in. 
And I was I, it was in April, and I was hitting one something. And he walked up to me in the clubhouse. He stuck his finger in my chest, and he goes, "I told you, we don't make mistakes." And he turned around and walked away. And that just gave me tons of confidence. Like he wanted me, but he also made it like very evident that it was an honor to play for the Giants and what that meant to wear the orange and black. And I think I think they're trying to get back to that, mm-hmm. to impart that. So once once Bob Melvin has a year under his belt and the, the word gets out when they're texting each other and after he, the game. Yeah, and he's the got players, a great rep. He's the players are like, rep. dude, it's awesome here. Yeah. These guys get it. There's never been a doubt how they treat players and families. Maybe... Maybe the, maybe you could question it's too good sometimes, where it does have an atmosphere of, like, you have everything you need. It's New York Yankees-ish, the way Giants treat families, the way the Giants treat players. They have every amenity they want. Their travel's amazing. The people that do it are amazing. So that in that regard, there's never been a question. But I think that, that there, there's an art to being just cocky enough and just confident enough and just sure of yourself and your organization to be like, bro, it's an honor to play for us, and we want to know that you want to play for us. If if, if I ever did that, which I, I I would never, I like wearing earphones and makeup on TV. <laughs> um, the, the first thing I would ask a free agent, whether it's the Niners, whether it's the Warriors, whether it's anybody, do, do you want to play for the Warriors or do you just want a contract? Like, there's a big difference. Yep. Do you want to be a giant? Is the first question I'd ask a coach that's interviewing for a job, a player, do you want to be a giant? Because here's what it means to be a San Francisco freaking giant, bro. And then... If you're like, I'm in, okay, well, well, we'll get to the numbers. And the numbers will compete with anybody. I just need to know if you want to be a giant. Don't blow smoke up my ass. Do you want to be a giant or not? And if you do, great. If you don't, go ahead. I'll find somebody else. And then th- that that was the old approach. And maybe the world has changed so much that that, yeah. that approach doesn't fly anymore. I don't know. But, but, but to your point about Farhan, he's evolving. And what he did three years ago to win 107 games doesn't work in 2024. It doesn't. The game is changing that much. That recipe doesn't work now. You got to figure a different thing out. That worked then. The, 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 that's four, four years ago, three years ago. That's a long time. Uh, 888 957 9570. Again, the news that broke just a short time ago. The Giants have been told, and this is uh, per Alex Pavlovich, uh, the Giants have been told that they are out of the bidding for Yoshinobu Yamamoto. This is the top of the starting pitching market, which the Giants absolutely have been steadfast all along that that's where they would shop and they want to address. They don't want to address the middle of their starting rotation. They want to address the top of it. They want an a 1A to go along next to Logan Webb. And there are other options out there. Blake Snell is a free agent. Corbin Burns might be um, on, the, uh, on the trade market. Uh, it, it's not all this, but this is someone who doesn't come on the free agent market very often in that he's not only wildly talented, He's 25. He's 25 years old, and that's why everyone is salivating over this guy. Giants have been working on him for two years. Sign with the Dodgers. I hope he signs with the Dodgers. Why is that? Because have them all, and then still bow out in the first round. <laughs> still, still won't. They win 140 <laughs> games, lose 20. I don't care, or 22, whatever yeah. it is, and then bow out in the first round. Yeah. I don't care. I'd rather have a scrappy Giants bunch that believes in themselves under their new manager, gets in as a wild card, and beats the Dodgers. Like, yep. go ahead. Everybody sign with the Dodgers. I don't. I almost swore. I don't give a crap anymore. Like, go sign with them. Yeah. You know where this is going to go, though, and I wonder, we'll go to the phones here in just a sec. If he signs with the Dodgers, you can count to three, and then here comes all the belly aching about the Otani contract that allowed them another $300 million to go get Yamamoto, and I do think that there will be a lot of belly aching, and I don't just mean Giants fans. I mean all baseball fans looking at what is going to be a perceived inequity in the way that the sport is built and and the rules that that exist that allow this kind of an operation. What, I mean, do, you th- what do you think about that? I, I see why he did it from tax reasons, like if you defer all that money, but I think it's bad for baseball because you're only taking $2 million. If, if, if you don't need the money that bad, then sign. Give, give every paycheck to a clubhouse kid, different one every month. Give every paycheck to a trainer in the clubhouse if you don't need the money. But now... Uh, the whole deferment thing is going to be a, a weapon used by ownership. And they're going to say like, hey, Mark, we love you. Here's $40 million, but can you defer 38 and take hmm. two this year? Uh, because that's what Otani did. And now you're setting a dangerous precedent where guys can manipulate. I mean, if we go back to Kurt Flood and free agency and how that was groundbreaking, and now this this might be along the same lines 
as we move forward. Do I blame Otani? No, but the system right now, the, the, if you could defer $68 that's, yeah, million dollars wild, and now keep signing players. It's a wild number. I know, I, know, I know guys, Max Scherzer did that. Jason Worth did it. Jason Worth redid his contract. I think it was a seven-year deal initially in like year five so that they could go out and sign other players. He deferred money. And so th- this is not the first time. It's just on a bigger scale with the best player in baseball. Well, no, as no one's ever deferred this kind of percentage, I don't think. Either. No. You know what I mean? And, and, and by the way, it, I, I agree with you. I think it's uh, bad for ball. I think there are inequities. Giants fans are not the ones who should be upset, though. If I were like a Pirates fan, I would be livid by yeah. this. So what, what, if I'm a Royals fan, what are we doing? I'm supposed to buy a ticket to go watch something and be told that it's competition? This is kindergartners against adults. What, like, what, why? Why would I? Why would I be snookered like that? I mean, it's just frustrating for fans. Totally. I, I, my, all my, I grew up here, man. I'm, I'm from here. Everybody, I'm hearing the same things you're hearing. Oh, same. Thing. Everyone's done. Yeah. They, yeah. they want to be entertained. I was asking some friends the other day, like, if you get Otani, you're still going to finish third, maybe. Mm-hmm. But the, they were Which like, I why, don't care. It'd be exciting. Right. But that's why Otani and Yamamoto won't come. That's the problem. Right now, they keep talking to free agents, and each free agent is one guy, and the Giants are more than one guy away. So why is that one guy going to be like, I'll be the first building block, even though you still need to go get four more guys? It's the best division in baseball. Yeah. But the Dodgers are going to be the Dodgers. The Padres aren't going to lose all the one-run games they lost last year. Nope. The Diamondbacks went to the World Series. Right. So there's a, there's a lot of work. To there's play. a lot it's of work. It's frustrating, man. It's frustrating for yep. me, and, I've, I, and I, I work for the team. It's yep, frustrating. And I, I sit here, and I'm able to very quickly, every time this happens, go, it's December 21st, so this is not going to be the roster in April. I know that. Um, but it doesn't mean it doesn't suck. It really, really, like, this is a, this story is so played out. We showed up. We had $300 million. They said no. Oh, well. On to the next. That is, there's nothing, there's nothing that you can do about how played out that is for the fans. Yeah, and it's a two-way street, too, man. Everybody's like, well, just go after them. They, but they want to get, they got to want to go after you. And if they don't want to go after you, there's not a whole lot you can do. No. And I know they just want the fans want somebody to land. You you go on Twitter or you talk to people you know. They just want anybody at this point that's uh, that's you know no, a, a notable player. We don't even know if J- Jung Hoo Lee is transitioning from Korea. We don't even know if he's going to be like this. Could be this. This has bust potential completely. I don't think it'll happen. But who cares what I think? I've never even seen the guy play. I love his personality. I thought he crushed last weekend with the way they handled the marketing aspect of him and the way he handled the press conferences and the Warrior game and Instagram, his dog. It's all great. <laughs> it's all great. Got a hit, though. Yeah, dude. Like, that's not going to last if you're hitting 211. So, well, I mean, that's, that's, that's a job coster if he doesn't. Oh, For yeah. a lot of people. Don't you think? That's a gamble. But I mean, you watch 113 mil. You watch the videos and you see him play defense. Defense is defense. I don't care what league you're playing in. Totally, he'll be fine out y- there. Your running skills are your running skills. Although I didn't know about the ankle until the press conference, which kind of was a little concerning. But apparently, he's fine with the surgery on his ankle. Mm-hmm. Um, but like his bat to ball skills, I, I'm over watching Giants strike out. I'm over watching baseball right now with all the strikeouts. Totally. There's something about fighting and battling and scrapping and clawing. And not going back to the dugout. We used to feel shame when we went back to the dugout after a strikeout. And even if I did strike out and it was a 10 pitch battle, at least I ran your pitch count up. And now I'm out, you only last five innings instead of seven. And just the three pitch strikeouts and not even carrying in baseball right now is super frustrating. So you got a guy that struck out 30 something times last year. That, that to me is the most appealing thing. Totally. So we'll see. Totally. Um, but again, it was in Korea. And I know everyone grabbed the World Baseball Classic at bat or whatever it was. He, you know, he, he roped one to right field off Yamamoto. Because a lot of people are like, he can't hit a fastball. Well, he hit one off Yamamoto, but then again, it was once. So, yeah. I had a like, fastball once. <laughs> I did. Off who? I don't know, but it was, it was like 96. <laughs> which, is, which is now like garden variety. Who doesn't throw 96? If we saw 100 they, on the scoreboard back in the day, we're like, oh, my God. Out. Yeah. Standing ovations. I remember uh, Armando Benitez when he was an Oriole. And right when they started showing velocity in the ballpark, I'm yeah. aging myself. But like it was 96 or 97. 
and he hit 100 and standing ovation. He came off the mound raising the roof with both hands because he hit 100. Now it's just like so everybody's got every one of those guys. throws 100 now. Totally. Jeez. <laughs> totally. Um, Brett in Walnut Creek. Hey, Brett, you're on with Willard and FP. What's up? Hey, guys. Uh, great to talk to you, FP. Great to hear your voice again, my friend. Um, I'm somewhere in between frustrated, mad, upset, sad, and also relegated to uh, envy of the Dodgers. And I'm thinking about, you guys mentioned a lot of things, and if you take money out of the equation, because that doesn't seem to be the equation, and then really what are these guys looking for? And I don't, I don't think the buster comments about San Francisco. I think it's really more about tradition. It's more about your teammates. It's more about your talent. And it's more about, I think, uh, Pete made the comment of, you know, do you have a good core and, and why does someone want to come here? Now, I want to come here because of the tradition, without question. I want to come here because San Francisco is a great international town, without a question. But I also want to win, and I want to be a part of a tradition that's shown they can win and has a, has a chance to keep winning. Because when we won 107 games, I didn't see the free agents lining up to come to San Francisco because they thought we were going to win another 107 games. And when you don't have the core group of people that your team can grow from, it's really not going to attract a lot of other people's. And I kind of, I'll use the 49ers as an example. And the Rams fans probably have envy of the 49ers. Like, why do the 49ers keep getting all the best players and they always want to go to the 49ers? The 49ers haven't won a Super Bowl in a long time. So it's not like, oh, well, they're, you know, they won a Super Bowl. They always go to the Super Bowl. They're perennial, but they've got an attitude. They've got teammates. They've got tradition. And they've got a core that, as a free agent, I want to be added to that core. I don't want to start the core. So, you know, if, if, if Luciano emerges, if Bailey emerges, Webb continues, our pitcher continues, then you're going to start to get some growth. But until then, because obviously money isn't the issue. Because if we're offering the same deal that someone else is, that's not the deal. And, and as far as the contract that Otani signed, you know, you have to have a player that's in a position to be able to defer that kind of money. If you're a, let's call it an average free agent, and someone's going to offer you $100 million, you're taking the money. You're not going to say, hey, guys, I'll just take four and defer 96 of it. You know, Otani is one of the limited few, and you could probably count them on one hand, of guys that would be even willing to say, I'll defer that kind of money. Oh, you I think could. Dwayne you, Piper made a statement. You you could more than Brett. Let's jump in here. Thanks, man. You like you could do more than uh, say uh, Otani might be one of a few on one hand. No, he that that's just him. Uh, Otani's one of one. Uh, nobody else is deferring sixty eight million dollars. Nobody else is even going to get offered sixty eight million dollars. Uh, nobody's barely more made more than half that in uh, in the history of baseball. So. Yeah, I, I, I get the, the core of what that point is, and I think you've talked about it today, FP. Like, guys want to win, and the Giants for a while now have been shopping on the free agent market trying to ask guys to come in to be the first one through the door, and um, that's not an easy sell. That's not that easy of a sell. Like, maybe it is as simple as the Giants are going to need to have another winning season before – the floodgates open on free agency. Look at the Warriors. The Bay Area has always been the Bay Area, but no one would have come here 30 years ago as a free agent if you had options because it was a joke of a franchise with a terrible owner. And then suddenly the Warriors became one of the most valuable franchises in the NBA. Why? Duh. Because a bunch of guys got drafted and broke the whole thing down. Yeah, I mean, winning takes care of everything. Winning takes care of attendance. It takes care of season tickets. It takes care. It's just a snowball thing. And right now, they're on they're they're on the wrong end of this avalanche. Yeah. And uh, the guys in that room are going to have to figure out a way to do it. And the the season's so weird with how how it never plays. I've never seen a team win a World Series in December or January. It just you just haven't. Like look at the teams that made all the moves last year. The Padres spent money like El Chapo was running the team, and right. it was the cartel. Right. And I don't know where they got that money from. And then the Mets did the same thing, and neither one of those teams sniffed. So, like, everyone was getting all excited about those teams last year. It all comes down to, like, it's a marathon and who stays healthy and who comes together. And, and 
it's not always the superstars. And right now, the Dodgers look unbeatable, right? But where has that gotten them recently? They, they won Nothing. one World Series in a COVID-shortened season that was basically a spring training where nobody was banged yeah. up. It was a weird playoff scenario. The guys were wearing masks. There was no fans in the stands. There was people that had great years that year that haven't sniffed those years since because they didn't have to play under the bright lights and the pressure of having 50,000 in a ballpark. Yeah. So, like, that that World Series, to me, is irrelevant. And if they're going to hang their hats on that, they've spent a lot of money to bow out in the first round the last, I don't know, two or three years.